Thank you for joining me tonight for Thursday Reflection. As the year continues, we're still in lockdown and um, I know this has been extremely hard for many folks. But the year continues and the seasons continue. And while I've found the days seem to merge into one as I drift along, my initial energy to use this time to catch up on loads of things seems to have waned at the moment. But I noticed while walking around my garden that the garden is changing. They say time and tide waits for no man. Well, the coming of spring in my garden is not waiting for me and I need to get out and do some preparation for summer. I was delighted to see my silver princess gum tree blossom once again and bringing with it a food food source for loads of native birds. And the other night when I was out, I noticed flying foxes in the tree. Such hospitality of nature helps in the cycle of our environment. When I think of hospitality, I think of having a few friends over for a meal, or maybe a glass or two of wine, and um, we think of the pleasant social setting shared by friends and family. Now with the current situation, um, we can't do that. But I'm delighted that we've been able to think outside the square and have caught up with family and friends through Zoom or other means. This year for our family, we've missed loads of birthdays. Um, the opportunity to get together and share a celebration. But in July, um, our family did get together through Zoom and to share a dinner in our individual homes. It was a birthday celebration of my husband's and a birthday cake was made and cut into portions and delivered to the doorsteps of our two family members and their families so that we could sing happy birthday together and be part of a celebration through the eating of the cake. However, no blowing out the candles. No, 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 that's not allowed at the moment. So the birthday boy removed the candles from the cake and waved the flames out. It was a very pleasant evening. In years gone by, I used to keep up to date with my parents in England through Skype. I would telephone and say, are you ready to Skype? And down would go the phone, dad would switch on the computer, mum would make a cup of tea, and when we all connected, we would talk for ages. Yes, technology has been marvellous. Um, with being able to make telephone calls to catch up with friends and families, but, but now we have so many different ways that we can actually see one another, which gives a, an added dimension in keeping our relationship strong. But I'd like to go back to the thought of hospitality. Sometimes I've thought about the reputation of Jesus because from the religious authorities, he was sort of known as the party boy. You may recall Jesus um, and the call of Matthew, the tax collector from Matthew chapter nine. It says, and Jesus went from there. He saw a man called Matthew and Matthew was sitting at his work gathering taxes. And Jesus said to him, follow me. Matthew got up and followed Jesus. Jesus ate in Matthew's house. Many men who gathered taxes and many who were sinners came to Matthew's house and sat down with Jesus and his followers. The proud religious law keepers saw this and they said to the followers of Jesus, why does your teacher eat with men who gather taxes and with sinners? 
in those days, eating with a, a tax collector was a bit like eating with an enemy, or in today's term, sharing a meal with a loan shark that profits from others' financial misery. Another time Jesus took part in hospitality was when he went to Simon the Pharisee's house for a very prestigious dinner where topics of the day were to be discussed. Now, since the dining areas in the homes of the elite were often partially open to the street, the public could listen into the conversation as well. However, in Luke chapter seven, it talks about a sinful woman who crossed this invisible barrier from the street into the invited elite space. And she shocked everyone in attendance with her actions. And self-righteous Simon was very indignant. Another time was another tax collector, and this was Zacchaeus, who was curious about Jesus. And he was actually in a tree observing Jesus from afar. But can you imagine to his surprise when Jesus said to Zacchaeus, go home because I'm coming to dinner at your house tonight. And then of course there was the meals he shared with Lazarus, Mary and Martha, where Martha became overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work that was needed to prepare for not only Jesus, but those who had come with him. Hospitality can be risky when we allow ourselves to be open to inviting the stranger or those who seem to appear to be different to us into our circle. I have found our congregation to have been most hospitable to those we do not know. We have welcomed a stranger through programs such as the Hub or Leisure Time and our combined lunches. It takes courage to join a table of folks we do not know. And equally, it takes courage to say to a person, come and join us. Jesus may have lost his reputation because of the company he kept, but through his acts of radical hospitality, he enabled people to have sacred encounters with God who transforms lives. Hospitality does not begin with the home, but with the heart. It is not working out how large our table is and therefore who should we invite or what food shall we offer tonight. But it's really through love. We demonstrate the wish to be hospitable with others. We are following on through the example of Jesus. And sometimes by doing that, we risk our own reputations. For through hospitality, we are offering a space where change can take place. The host, albeit in a private gathering or a public space or in worship, is a gift for the guest to find themselves. This love is the love of being patient and kind and not jealous or being rude or selfish, but allowing the guest and host to encounter that transformation. For if we always surround ourselves with folks who are just like ourselves, it becomes a very narrow life it becomes a very narrow viewpoint. And that narrow viewpoint can cause disunity rather than unity. I'm thinking at the moment of the troubles in America with the Black Lives Matter movement. I received a post on Facebook that urges us to be careful what we post so that we can contribute to discourse not division, that we can transcend the bitterness and be better even when we disagree.
While we individually called to follow Jesus, our discipleship is not an individual affair. For we are called into community where we serve and encourage one another. As Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Do not become a stumbling block, whether to Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in all I do. That's a bit hard. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, that they may be saved. So, as Jesus died with the enemy, is there any enemies you know that need help? As Jesus administered to the invited guest, is there an unwanted guest we could minister to? As Mary took time to listen to Jesus, do we take time out to listen to God? And as Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' home, is there someone who needs a visit from us? Hospitality is a wonderful gift. From the hospitality of the environment that provides for all living things, from the hospitality of Jesus who calls us to be transformed through the power of love, to the hospitality we give and receive to others who are not only family and friends, but also strangers. I'd like to read to you a poem from Joan Chichester. She's an American Benedictine nun and theologian who is an advocate of justice, peace and equality and co-chair of the Global Peace Initiative of Women. This is how it goes. Without guests, life here is just one more instance of securing ourselves in the midst of our people, our kind, our type. But the guest refuses to allow us to become snug and secure in our little monastic cells. The guest intrudes on our schedules and makes demands on our energy and pries open our closed minds and stretches our hearts to the breaking point. The guest refuses to allow us to see the spiritual life as an exercise in making neat and tidy schedules for ourselves. Guests save us from counting as holiness, the ironclad world of the self. We have managed to construct and structure so well. So until we meet again, I ask may you continue to be transformed by the love of God. And whilst we can't meet in person, I hope you will be guest and host to others using what means you can. And as we sit at the feet of God, we accept the hospitality offered not only to us, but to us all. Amen. <laughs>